beard, I'd have said, no, you're not, uh, you're not right. But anyway, thank you, Brother Tom. Let's take our Bibles and turn to Philippians chapter 3. I was planning on finishing this message last Sunday night, but alas, I did not make it. And so Brother Kevin filled in for me. I appreciate him doing that. 1260, page 1260, if you have a Schofield Bible. 1260, Philippians chapter 3. The Bible said, brethren, verse 13, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Now, Paul said, I've got one thing I'm gonna do, but he named it in three parts. He said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I pray that you'll lead, guide, and direct us now as we study thy word. We thank you that faith comes by hearing, hearing by and through the word of God. So lead us now, I pray. Open thou our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. In Christ's name, amen. We talked last Sunday morning about uh, Paul saying that uh, he was gonna, he was going to, uh, one thing he was gonna do now, Paul had struggles and Paul had problems just like we have. I shared with you last week, he started out as Saul of Tarsus. He was one of the uh, highest uh, students in Gamaliel's uh, rabbi school. He was uh, very well accepted. He was very well versed and well learned. He was a Pharisee. And so young Saul of Tarsus had a, a, a bright future. A bright future, a rosy future. They had plans for Saul. And uh, he was so dedicated to Judaism. He was so dedicated that when the church got started and Jesus started the first Baptist church when he was baptized by John the Baptist. Amen. And uh, he had 12 members. And, of course, one of them was a devil. I pastored some of them down through 40 years. I, I've had some of them myself, amen. But uh, he, uh, Saul hated the church because it was made up primarily of Jews that had turned to Christ. Now on the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God fell and 3,000 souls were saved, baptized, and added to the church, there was not one Gentile in the bunch. All of them were Jews that I heard the preaching. They were there in Jerusalem for the, uh, the Feast of Pentecost and uh, there was not a Gentile that was saved. As a matter of fact, there was no Gentiles that received the Holy Spirit uh, that moved inside till they went down to Cornelius' house. And that's where the Spirit fell on the Gentiles and they started out. But Saul hated the church because it was some of his friends, men that he knew, they had turned their back on Judaism. They had turned their back on what they had grown up and they have accepted this Christ as their Messiah and it hacked Saul and it hacked the leaders of the, of the Jewish, it hacked them to no end. And so they'd give Saul papers and Saul would go out when he heard that a group was starting, maybe a church was starting, he would go down and bust the meeting up He'd have people arrested. He'd have people beaten. And he had people killed because of their stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder, I wonder this morning if, if men burst into this building with guns and, and said we're here and we won't ever born again child of God Christian to come with us. We're gonna shoot you out in the parking lot. I wonder how many of us would stand up and walk out. I, I, I hope that I would. I pray that I would, but I, I, I don't know. And so Paul, whose name was Saul, he created great havoc. But he had papers in his pocket. He's on his mule going down to Damascus. And the Bible said a bright light shone from heaven and knocked him off of his mule. And you know one thing, just a little side note, Paul never saw good again after that. He was blinded for three days. He didn't see anything. And then Ananias went up there and prayed over him. And uh, the Bible said the scales fell off of his eyes. But Paul had bad eyesight. The rest of his eye, as a matter of fact, uh, he, he had uh, such trouble seeing that of all the books that he wrote, 
And I believe there's 14 in the New Testament. I consider Hebrews to be a work of Paul. And uh, all of those books, there was only one book that he wrote with his own hand. And that was the book of Galatia. That was the book of Galatians that we have. All the rest of them, he dictated it. And he told Dr. Luke. Dr. Luke wrote down what he wanted to say. And that's how it came about. But he got so angry when he heard about the church at Galatia a turning to Judaizers and turning to another gospel. He got so angry. He grabbed a piece of parchment and a quill and he started writing this letter to the Galatians. And at the end of the book he said, you see how large a letter I've written. It wasn't a long book, wasn't a large letter. He said I was writing in big, la- big letters because I had to see it. He's having his, I might near blind. And that's the only book that he wrote. But anyway... God converted Saul and changed his name to Paul. And Paul was now going back to the cities that he was in, that he broke the church up. Now he's there trying to promote the church. In the city where he had people uh, arrested and beaten and killed, he's now there preaching the gospel. And Paul had a horrible past when when you think about what he did against God and against the church and against Jesus. Don't you know the devil uh, sat straddle him and made him feel like he was not worthy. I know, I know, boy, when it got late at night and he's laying in bed by himself, I know the demons of hell came and accosted him and assailed him and said, you're not worthy. Who do you think you are? You had this, these people beaten. You had families broken up. You had this one killed. And now you're coming down here preaching. Who do you think you are? Paul had a dilemma Paul had a path that if it had been the average man would have stopped him, would have caused him to go back and not go forward. But Paul said, this one thing I do, I'm not going back. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not going to turn my back on the Lord. I'm going forward. I'm marching on. I'm preaching on. I'm praying on. I'm singing on. I'm going forward for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what every one of us in this building need this morning. A new trip to Calvary. New new, uh, fresh oil placed in us to make our minds up in 2024 that we're going forward. We're going forward. Now he said there's three things I do. He said first of all, forgetting those things which are behind. All of us have a past. And all of us have things in our past that we're ashamed of. There's not one sinless person that has ever been on this earth save the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody has a past. I heard a preacher say one one time that ever, uh, ever sinner has a future and every saint has a past. And uh, all of us have got skeletons in the closet. All of us have bones that rattle in our, in, our, uh, in our past that if it was brought up and shown on a screen here tonight, our sins we, would embarrass us to death. But listen to me. I'm glad when I came to Calvary. I'm glad when I accepted Christ as my Savior, all, A-double-L, all, every sin was washed away by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if he's not going to hold my sins against me, if he's not going to make me answer for my sins, then why, tell me why, should we worry and fret about something that God Almighty has not remembered against us? If we've asked him to save us and to wash us clean, beloved, we can forget our past sins. We can forget what's behind us. God is not going to bring that up to us. He's not going to put it in front of us. It's behind us. It's behind us. It's behind us. And the only way you can see it is to turn around and look in the past. And I've got news for you. You won't find anything in the past that you need for today. The Bible says sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. You're not going to go ahead looking in the past. You can't go forward looking behind you. You can't drive down the road as fast as you want to if your eyes are glued on the rear view mirror. You'll wind up running up a tree. 
running in a ditch, running over somebody or something. But we've got to forget our past. And then number two, look what he said. He said, not only am I going to forget my past, forgetting those things which are behind. Number two, and reaching, say the next word. Reaching forth. Forth is, is the, the root where we get the word forward. He said, I'm not going to look in my past. I'm going to forget those things that are in my past. And he said, I'm going to reach forth. I'm going to reach forward. I'm not going to live in the past. I'm not going to uh, look to the past. I'm going forward. I'm moving forward. I'm going ahead. Listen to me. God has got answered prayer and God has got blessings and God has got good things for you, but they're in front of you. They're not behind you. You got to look ahead. You got to look ahead. You got to reach ahead. It's ahead of you, not behind you. Turn in your Bibles real quick to Psalm 121. The psalmist said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Where's your help coming from? From the hills. I will lift up mine eyes. Psalm 121, page 662, if you have a Schofield Bible. He said, David said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Beloved, if we're going to, if we're going to make it through 2024, we not only have to forget the past, but we have to reach forth under those things which are before us. Now listen to me. You cannot reach forward unless you're facing forward. There's, there's, there's time. It's long overdue. that Some of you got in this altar and said, okay, God, my past hadn't been real good. I've started and quit and started and quit and got messed up here and went over there. But I'm putting all of this under the blood of Jesus and I'm starting today. I'm starting this moment. I'm starting right now. I'm going to, I'm going to receive the forgiveness you promised me. And I'm moving forward. I'm going to look ahead. Amen. I'm not going to live in my past. And when the devil brings my past up, I'm going to tell him to get behind me, Satan. Amen. Get behind me. I'm looking ahead. I'm moving forward. I'm not looking back. I'm not going back. I'm looking ahead to the blessings of God, to the battles that he'll help me win, to the victories he has for me to win. But it's all ahead. It's all ahead. It's all ahead. In God's name, cross over Jordan and take that that is rightfully ours. Children of Israel have been slaves for 400 years. God led Moses and he approached Pharaoh and finally got the Jews out of Egypt and they're, they're heading to the promised land. We know what a victory they won down at the Red Sea when God baptized Pharaoh and all the chariots of Egypt, killed every one of them and they marched to the little place of Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea. Now these Jews have been set free from slavery 400 years, their parents and grandparents and great-grandparents had been slaves, but they're free men now. They're not under the Egyptian taskmasters. They have followed the Lord who was guiding Moses and they saw a giant victory at the Red Sea. Who in the world could deny the power of God Almighty when the Red Sea parted and they walked across on dry ground? So they get down to Kadesh Barnea and the promised land is just across Jordan on the other side. And so they got there and Moses said, well, now we need to figure out where we're going to ford, where the, the uh, shallow part is in the Jordan. We need to find out where the villages are, where the towns are, where are we going to attack first. We've got to lay things out and none of them had ever been there. They'd all been slaves. They'd been born in slavery. 
And so Moses got a delegation of 12, one from each of the 12 tribes. And he sent them over Kadesh to spy out the land, to lay out a course, and to come back and tell them where they can ford the Jordan River and where the first battle should be. And that's what they went over to do. Well, Moses sent them, and they began to wait. And they waited, and they waited. Finally, one morning, runner comes to Moses and said, Mr. Moses, the spies are back from Egypt. And they went down and they watched the men cross the Jordan River. And they had grapes, a cluster of grapes that was so large, they had to run a pole through it. And two men, one up, one in front of it, one behind it, having to carry the grapes. They were huge grapes. They were so large it took two men to carry this cluster. And they got back and everybody assembled around them. They're so excited. Tell us about it. Tell us about it. And they said, well, we'll tell you one thing. God was sure right when he said it was a land flowing with milk and honey. He said they've got pastures over there. The grass would be up to the cow's belly. And it seemed like every time we stopped at a tree or stopped by some rocks, there was a, there was a hive of bees making honey all over that land and rivers and creeks and it's a great land. And everybody said, amen, praise God, hallelujah. But then they said, whatever Baptist that's not right with God says, but. I know what the Bible says, but. I know what I'm supposed to do, but. I, Brother Dean, I, I know where the church stands, but. And these, these uh, spies came back and said, it's a great land, but listen to me. The cities have got walls around them like you have never seen. This one city they call Jericho, the wall is so wide that horses carrying chariots can ride side by side about four deep on the walls of the city. The walls are so thick, there's apartments in them and people are living in the wall. It's a huge wall. Not only that, we got in there and got to scouting and we saw a whole tribe of people that are giants. They're huge. They're giants. And the spies said, it's a land flowing with milk and honey, but the cities are walled. The people are like giants. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. We be not able to cross over and take this Jordan. Now listen to me. Hey, come here just a minute. I'm going to be finished in just a second. Don't, don't leave me now. These spies spoke directly against the word of God. God had told Moses, you cross Jordan, you go over there, and there's not a city I'll, I'll not help you conquer. There's not a people I'll not help you conquer. Moses, you take these people and you go over, and I'll help you. We'll clear the land out, and the folks can uh, uh, take over their houses and, and, their, and their orchards and their fields. You got to cross over Jordan and take it, Moses. But these people came back and said, we be not able. Beloved, any time you make your mind up to serve God, to do something for God, there's always going to be a naysayer. There's always going to be somebody tell you it can't be done. You can't do it. You've messed up before. You'll never get it done. You can listen. We need to forget that mess and put it behind us and cross over Jordan and take the land that is rightfully ours. David said, I'll lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Now, beloved, God has something good for you, but you've got to reach forth. You've got to face the right direction. You, you've got to be looking for the blessing when it comes. If you wake up in the morning and you want to see the sunrise and you stand there on your deck or on your porch and you look to the west Guess what? You're not going to see the sunrise. If you look south, you're not going to see the sunrise. If you look north, you're not going to see the sunrise. The only way to see the sunrise in South Carolina is to look to the east. The sun comes up 
in the east and crosses the nation. And beloved, you'll not see it unless you're facing the right direction. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. God, I said on the radio this morning, the Lord gave me this little thought, the same God that got you where you are is the same God that'll help you get where you're going. Amen. Now, I want to ask you, is anybody here this morning, can anybody say I'm a Christian and I'm blessed of God? Can anybody say amen to that? Amen. amen. Now, I know we have problems. I know there's sickness. I know there's pain. I know there's bills. I know all of the, I know that. But I'm going to stand before you this morning. I'm going to tell you God's been good to me. I said God's been good to me. Amen. He's helped me. He's been there for me. He's been a strong arm to lean on. As I buried my brother the 1st of November, then buried my daddy the 1st of December, God has been there for me. Amen. Now, I'm not going to tell you there are not times that a wave of emotion will sweep over me and I'll weep and I'll cry. There'll be something wrong with somebody that, that didn't cry over a loved one that you loved. But I can tell you, hey, come here. God has given me grace to face everything that 2023 is thrown. Amen. And I made it through. And dear friends, you have made it through. Now you may, have, you may have crossed over in 2024 limping. You may have drug one leg and one eye's poked about half out. And you're battered and bleeding. But hey, you made it. You're here. God's got you here. And you're blessed and you're helped of God. In God's name, the same God that got me here is the same God that'll keep me going if I will but trust in him. You know the story how the children of Israel refused to cross over? Moses couldn't make them. And so God said, fine, you'll wander in the desert for 40 years until everyone that's 20 and above die. And I'm gonna hatch me, I'm gonna raise me up a new generation and a new leader. And of course we know that was Joshua who took the people and led them over Jordan and saw great victories that God would have given Moses and these people's grandparents and parents, but they would not trust God. Now let me ask you a question. This is just right now. Look right here. I'm through. Close your Bible. Look right here. One question. I'm done. Who are you listening to? Are you listening to God that says go forward? Are you listening to God that says, I'll help you, I'll strengthen you, I'll bless you? Or are you listening to these backslidden spies that said, we be not able? You say, Brother Dan, I'm too sick. You're not too sick, you can't serve God. You say, I'm ignorant. You're not so ignorant that you can't serve God. You say, Preacher Dean, I'm poor. I don't have two nickels to rub together. You're not so poor that you can't serve God. The world says you're a nobody. The world says you need to quit. The world says, who do you think you are? The world says you be not able. I'm not able, but I have a God that is, and I'm going to trust him, and I'm going to depend on him, and I'm going to lean on him, and I'm going to live mine eyes under the hills from whence cometh my help. Let's rise up and cross over this Jordan and take that which God has for us. Father, I pray that you'll help us. I pray that you'll help us this morning to make our mind up. We're not gonna let anything stand between us and the victory line. Oh God, please help us this morning to make a new determination. I'm not going back. I'm not looking back. I'm not thinking back. I'm going ahead. I'm gonna think ahead. I'm gonna move ahead. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna be ahead. I'm going forward. Oh God. Help us to listen to you and mind you and let these naysayers alone and let them prophesy their doom and their destruction. But with God, all things are possible. Help us now, I pray. Let's stand to our feet. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I know this crowd I've preached to, you know you're all saved. But I think some of you this morning see so step to the aisle, come to this altar and say, Lord, I'm here to tell you I'm re-enlisting. I'm not going to look back. I'm not going back. I made my mind up. I'm going forward for you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to depend on you. I'm going to lean on you for victory. I'm coming to you, Lord. Here I am. Whatever I have, 
I give to you. Christian, step out and come. Let's talk to the Lord this morning. Let's rededicate, renew, and refresh that relationship we have with sweet Jesus. You mind the Spirit now as we tarry.